So I'm making this video right now. It's Sunday, 9.42 p.m. And by the time y'all watching this video, maybe y'all done heard the news. But after reading, it goes to prove that everything that I've been saying since the day Isam tested positive is exactly what I told y'all it was. It's corruption on the AIU's part. So I made this tweet and I added the AIU. I said the AIU is corrupt as fuck. Only if y'all knew. But now I'm about to let y'all know. So it's been 10 months and we haven't heard, well, y'all haven't heard no updates on the Osama Singer case. But from all the details that I knew, I was like, bro, this shit literally makes no sense. Like he lives at a school. He can't go out and buy drugs. Like he don't even have the money to do no shit like that. His coach, his parents can't go out to do nothing like this. He didn't test positive for an amount that would be large enough to even help his performance. So something else is to this. So after all my reading and research, I finally found out exactly what happened in the Isama Singer case and why him getting banned is literally the craziest thing on earth. So let's go through the timeline. June 30th of 2023, Isama Singer won the Gatorade Player of the Year Award. This was a great achievement. He had broke the high school national records in the 60 and the 200 indoor. He had ran a wind 89-8, stepped on Noah Lyles, ran fast in the outdoor 200, so it was only rightfully so. When you win Gatorade Player of the Year, they fly you out to the little convention award thing that they have, which Isama was at July 13th. Two weeks, three weeks after he won the player of the year in Los Angeles, California. And at the convention, they were given like a whole like locker full of stuff sponsored by Gatorade. Gatorade products that some of us have seen, some products that are discontinued for some strange reason. And one of those products that were given, this was one of the products that was given is some Gatorade recovery gummies. And you've never seen these before. And I've never seen these before because they have been discontinued for some strange reason. But they were given to the players of the year in their athletics package at the convention in Los Angeles. Isama Singer, he took his and he ate them. Well, he ate some of them. And shortly after, he took a drug test and it came back positive. And they were trying to figure out where the positive came from because he had all his substances that he take. And they're all like certified. And even with the Gatorade recovery thing, it had an NSF certification mark on it. So it's technically good to eat. But turns out these actually weren't certified despite the false label placed on them by Gatorade. So after them trying to figure out what it was, everything that he took and ate were sent to a lab that the AIU said that they should send it to their own lab so their people can test it. And these were sent in. And they randomly tested three of these gummies and all three of them tested positive for a small amount of GW1516, which is the same thing Isama Singer tested positive for. And they were saying, ah, well, maybe he could have contaminated these since this was already open. So we need another one type shit. So another athlete who was at the Gatorade Player of the Year thing sent theirs in as well to be tested. And there's tested positive for GW1516 as well. But the AIU was saying, eh, maybe he could have somehow contaminated bros too, even though he's across the country. So the AIU labs, the people in charge of like the testing and banning, tested these products and came to the conclusion in which they were contaminated with GW1516 by Gatorade somehow in their production. Isam ate them. And he tested positive for the small amounts that were in him. Those same small amounts that they found when the AIU lab tested him. But somehow, since they make the rules, they can bend the rules and break their own rules because they're in charge. And in track and field, the track people have no power. The drug testers hold all the power in their hand. And this is one of the only sports in which this happens. So people were saying I was crazy at first when I said, oh, Isam beat Noah Laws. And that's the reason he tested positive. That's not the reason he tested positive, but that's the reason they won't unban him. It's a narrative that they're trying to spin. Anybody who's a threat to their top dick rider, no allows, they will get you going. If you test positive 
And despite you providing the evidence in which you weren't actually doping because they're there for the integrity of the sport. So if you willingly and knowingly dope, they should ban you. But if you unwillingly take a contaminated substance falsely labeled by a million dollar company while you're a kid in high school and nobody could even determine that without it being lab tested, how would you get suspended for that? So they said, fuck all the common sense. This motherfucker is a threat to Noah Lyles because he's beat him already. So we got to get him out of here, despite all of this evidence being in his favor. Just pay attention to us beating Noah Lyles. Like, Craven Charleston won USA's in 100 last year. He ran nine, nine. He just ran nines all year last year. We haven't seen him run since USA's last year, literally. So that goes to show you, if you're a threat, they will get you going. And that's the case with Osama Singa. He didn't get banned because he was doping. He got banned because of the corruption of the AIU. And most motherfuckers in track know this shit goes on and they won't say nothing. But I just feel like personally this was crazy as fuck. And like if bro was doping, I'd be like, all right, he was doping, he got caught, boom. But that clearly wasn't the case. And like they have they had like a whole court process where you can read the documents and see that this is exactly what happened. And they still ban him. So I just feel like that was crazy, bro. Free that boy, son.